how to choose the keel for your sailboat. Hello, uh, this Thursday's how-to video <laughs> will be filmed on our friend's couch because um, today this happened. <laughs> uh, more info to come on that later, but I can't move. So we're on a couch. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be talking about how to choose what kind of keel you want on your boat because um, there are a few major important decisions to make when you're deciding on what kind of boat to buy. And one of the biggest decisions is going to be the keel shape or design. Now, one important thing, if you already have a boat, that's the keel you have. <laughs> be happy with it and go sailing. Each keel shape has um, positives and negatives. You're never going to win completely. Um, it just completely depends on the style of sailing that you're planning on doing. So since we are slow and don't have a time limit and also are really big on long crossings um, and safety and safety and storm survival ability <laughs> we have a full keel and um, a fin keel provides just the opposite it provides speed and lightness and where efficiency. and efficiency um, but it will not weather a storm well and um, or it won't help you during a storm. Right. It'll make it through the same as a full keel will, but a full keel will help you make it a little less awful. We like to say that fin keels are made to outrun a storm and full keels are made to weather a storm. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty accurate. So we're beginning by just talking about the two extremes, right? Um, fin and full keel. There are a lot of yeah. modifications of both designs. Yeah, and you'll see some that yeah. look... Yeah. Herbie it, will go through them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just if you're deciding between fin and full to begin with, um, we're a little biased towards full because obviously that's what we have <laughs> and that's what we chose to have. Yeah. Uh, because so, we do value safety. We don't have a time limit. And uh, it's just we like to heave too. They're better at heaving too. Things like that. Yeah. So one of the, the big things with a fin keel, it's actually bolted to your hull, which means it can come unbolted from your hull. And Especially then you, if you, you a run aground. Yeah. <laughs> and then with a full keel, it's actually the shape of your hull comes down into the shape of the keel, and the ballast is actually inside there. So in order for your keel to fall off, that means that the bottom half of your boat just cracked off. That, that doesn't <laughs> Doesn't happen. happen. Yeah. <laughs> So for very long-term cruising situations, uh, it tends to be better to have a full keel. But if you're racing, for instance... A full keel's the worst. A full keel is the worst. Um, so it totally depends on what kind of sailor you want to be. Uh, and yeah, Herbie's going to take you around the boatyard and give you a little tour of some different keel designs. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Now the purpose of the keel is twofold. One is to hold a lot of mass or the ballast very far down. That way it helps resist the riding moments. When you see a sailboat heel over, the thing that's keeping it from going is the mass of the keel pulling it back. So if you can get that mass further away, then thanks to leverage, it's a lot more effective and it works a lot better and you can get by with less weight, which then makes the whole boat a lot lighter. So having a really long keel that goes down very far and all the mass very low is very advantageous because that then lets you have more riding moment, which lets you carry more sail and more wind. Now, the other reason for a keel is it creates, uh, it acts as an airfoil, which then helps pull the boat to windward and keeps you from drifting laterally. So those are the two big advantages, or the, the two main goals, and that is best shown in a racing sailboat. So you can see this guy here is pretty much a completely flat haul, tiny little blades for the rudders, and the keel is just a very thin blade with a bulb at the bottom. So all the mass is kept all down here, and you have the thinnest possible airfoil that you could for the keel itself. Now the reason for the thinness is this is what they call a very, very high aspect ratio. So it's super narrow and then super long. So what happens is this edge is the only area that's actually creating lift to help pull the boat to windward and keep you from drifting through the water laterally. 
the rest of it is drag. Now, that, since it's holding so much mass at the bottom of the keel, you can't just have a really, really pencil of a keel because it needs to have some strength. But then, as you go further back, you're then adding more wetted surface area, which adds more resistance and more drag. So it, it's a very thin line as to how small you can make the keel to make it as effective as possible, but while being as small as possible. But it's a very small interface from the hull to the keel. This one, you can see they've done a whole lot of repairs trying to balk it up to add some area to it because it, it just, it'll crack. It's so much stress on those keel bolts. So what they've done effectively is add the area from being just at the keel itself going up and they've fanned it out and pretty much quadrupled the surface area of its attachment. So that's gonna help spread the force out over a much larger area. Here we have a typical modern day cruiser racer style keel. And you can see the fin keel and the interface from the keel to the hull is very limited. It's just this small area up here. And that interface is under a whole lot of stress because all the weight is down here at the bottom. Now, being how it's a rather short keel, it then reduces the amount of drag that it creates and still is quite aerodynamic. And then back here, you can see the rudder is completely supported by the rudder post itself. Now, this setup where you have the rudder post here and then some of the blade behind and some of the blade in front, this helps balance out the forces that you feel. As you turn, this is actually gonna help pull the rudder over and then this will then counteract it. So it's, the balance point is about 20 degrees, is 20% uh, is where they ideally wanna have the rudder post if you can do that. Now this is something you can only do when you have a free rudder because if you have anything in front, then you start at the rudder post and everything is trailing and then you have to take up all the force on the tiller or the helm. You can see on a full keel boat like this Auberg 30, only the front part's doing any of the work. The rest is just drag. It's just wetted surface area adding resistance. But the big advantage of it is that all that added surface area is just adding interface from keel to hull. So if you were to bump into anything, rather than being a shock load with a giant lever arm just smashing the hull in, it's a much bigger area. So then it's a lot less force onto each area, each square inch, which spreads out the load and then makes the boat actually a lot stronger in that sense. So this guy here is a very, very popular cruiser because you can go anywhere with it. You can bump into stuff. It's really thick, really heavy, and really strong. The other big advantage being how you have the keel coming all the way back to the end, the rudder hangs on to the back of the keel. So here, the rudder is actually fully protected. So say you were to bump into something up front, as that object comes along the back, it's just gonna run off the back of the boat. It's not gonna rip your rudder off or any problems like that because the rudder is completely protected behind the keel. This keel and rudder setup has been affectionately called the cruiser's keel. So you have a modified full keel with a cutout in front of the rudder and then a skeg to hang the rudder off of. Now this layout is kind of the best compromise people have come to when it comes to making a keel that's strong so you can ground yourself and all those wonderful things that you try and avoid doing. But at the same time, you don't have as much wetted surface area so you don't have as much problems with drag. And then the rudder, instead of being free hanging and kind of weak and out there, it's hung on a skeg. So the skeg is really strong and well attached to the boat and then the rudder just hangs off the back of it. So if you're gonna take an impact to the rudder, it's hopefully gonna hit the skeg and that'll shield the rudder from getting damaged. Now when it comes to looking at something, you always have to think, how's this gonna break and how are you gonna fix it? So for example, the idea here where they put the rudder trailing behind a very thin skeg, that way it's a very high aspect ratio appendage, so it'll create a lot of lift to be very efficient without having all that extra drag on there. That sounds great, but it, they're, they're delicate because they're only supported by the rudder post. So what if we could add a skeg in front, but a skeg that's so thin that it doesn't really add any drag? Well, that's, that's what happened here. And you can see there's the skeg here that runs all the way down to the bottom. This is pretty much the idea of a full keel with a rudder hung onto the back of the keel. Except that it's such a thin piece of fiberglass. It's delicate, it's, it's weak. You can actually see there's a crack here. 
and then the crack comes around here and runs up. So not only does this look like a weak design, it is a weak design, it's actually already failed and had a fracture. That's the problem when you get a boat, they are gonna break. There's, there's no way around it, every boat is gonna break. They're purpose built for their one purpose. Anything outside their purpose, they're gonna fail at it. And at their purpose, they're still gonna break. So it's just a matter of figuring out what's gonna work and what you think you'd be able to fix the easiest with your skills. This steel boat behind me is the epitome of a full keel. You can see it starts at the bow and runs all the way to the end of the stern where the prop comes out and then the rudder is hung off the back of the off the back of the keel. So that gives you a whole lot of wetted surface area, a whole lot of drag, and very, very little lift. But it's really strong, so that's that's the trade-off that you have to deal with. Now by contrast, instead of having a full keel or a modified full keel or all those things, we have what's called a long keel, which is pretty much a wedge, sort of. It starts off at the bow and then just runs as a straight diagonal line down. And then the rudder hangs off the back. So the actual keel section starts about here and runs back that way. It's kind of in between. Is it a full keel? Is it a what keel? So this is called the long keel. Uh, the advantages that it has is it's got less wetted surface area than a full keel because you don't have the part in the front, uh, but you still have the protection to the rudder that a full keel offers. There's no sacrifice there. The issue with the rudder is then since it's hung off the keel, there's nothing in front. So the balance isn't perfect, so you get more weight in the helm, so you have to trim your sails better. And then the prop itself is encased inside an aperture where it's fully protected and everything is well attached and strong and safe, but it's not gonna be fast. If you look at the amount of wetted surface area of our boat, for example, and compare that to a modern day racer cruiser, you can see that they don't have anything extra that hangs down below the waterline. Everything is nice and flush, nice and low, and very, very thin appendages that come down only where they are needed and only where they are needed for the function that's from them. Where in our case, we have this whole wall that just takes up a lot of space and a lot of wetted surface area. We hope you found this informative, and if you have any questions, be sure to let us know. And if you have any comments or suggestions for future videos, let us know as well. Happy sailing! Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.